Well, tonight, the G7 is one member less. Kawira Mongaza's impeachment has been upheld by the Senate. The first time governor was not third time lucky. However, the issue is in court and temporary orders have been issued to suspend the decision from the Senate. One, we hold this is a political issue that should be resolved politically because not even the courts can impose a leader on the lead. But we will allow that process to go on now that an inter-party hearing is scheduled for later. Kawira remains governor until a decision is reached affirming the impeachment or overturning it altogether. Now this is possible. It has happened before in the county of Embu. But this is not our interest tonight. The people of Meru are. First, the impeachment of Kawira Mangaza is not a gender issue. It has been packaged as such. Even though women are the minority in the Council of Governors, in the last election they were voted in their numbers, seven to be precise. Even the chairperson of the current Council of Governors is a woman. Now this preposition that Kawira is being targeted because she is a woman is preposterous and dangerous for democracy. Now voters of Meru knew this fact and still voted her in. It is an escapist attitude. Male or female, when issues of accountability suffice, they should be adhered and addressed as such. In the second impeachment, Kawira Mongaza survived because her defense team painted a picture of a woman under siege from the male counterparts in other positions of leadership. Likely her case was based on the same and of course it succeeded. Now the county and the country agreed with that case, but there were questions of accountability that were defeated by the PT party. Seven charges against Mongaza were brought out misappropriation of county resources, nepotism, and ethical practices, bullying and vilifying other leaders, usurping statutory powers, contempt of court, illegal naming of a public road after her husband, and contempt of the Meru County Assembly. Now these were accountability issues that needed to be addressed. The third impeachment that was confirmed by the Senate also had accountability issues. There were three gross violation of the constitution, gross violation of various national and county laws, and of course, abuse of that office. This time around, in spite of yet again mounting a defense around witch hunt and attempting to co-opt the gender card, the Senate read through that script and voted in favor of the action that was taken by the county assembly. And this is our concern tonight. In fact, we dare say that due to the undoubtedly broken relationship between the two arms of the county government, Meru County needs to be dissolved. Kawira Mongaza, if saved by the courts, should petition President William Bruto to dissolve that county. Two years of doing nothing but wrangling and grandstanding, and as a lesson, the MCS should seek fresh mandate. Kawira and the rest of the leadership too should be vetted afresh by the voters in an election. When Professor Kivuta Kibwana, for example, found it difficult to work and work with the county assembly, he took the next legal step to ask for the dissolution of the county. Now the assembly straight up, straightened up and work began. He retired one of the most celebrated governors. Either the president on his own motion, like what happened right here in Nairobi County during Mike Sonko's time, take charge of that county or Kawira Mangaza must refer this to state house if saved by the courts. Public service is not a birthright, but a privilege and an opportunity to make a difference. If you don't, or if you can't, you have no place in public service. A good place to begin tonight. At Ken Mijunga across all social media platforms, the headlines. Tonight, not so fast. Kawira Mwangaza to remain governor of Meru County until her case is decided as the county assembly celebrates her impeachment. Will the court save her again? I'm not going to be very active in Kenyan politics uh, henceforth. President William Ruto to officially launch Raila Odinga's bid for the Africa Union Commission next week. We tell you who else wants that seat. The commission has once again failed to address our concerns. And too little, too late, 
Teachers Service Commission hold last ditch attempts at averting the looming strike with their unions. Will the talks hold? Also tonight, the hunters are the hunted. Interdicted police officer suspected of aiding escapees from Gigiri Police Station presented in court. The DCI seeks to hold them for two weeks. We tell you why. And of course, a very good evening and welcome to the broadcast. Tonight, we speak to Ndegwa Njiru. He brought the house down literally at the impeachment hearing in the Senate. We ask him where he draw 